In the moment tonight, I promise you to be a special moment. So this week here at the Fowler Show, we are celebrating some sort of milestone. We very have very we have very few milestones. But this week, the other half of the Fowler Show team has a birthday. Our executive producer, Rich Webster, who you see, who does some segments, has a birthday. So I thought that here at the Fowler Show, what I would do is 10 things that you should know about our executive producer, Rich Webster. Thing number one. Rich Webster has a weird, weird obsession with exotic beverages, which really makes no sense to the common person, but you should know that he likes really weird beverages, and at some point in time in his life, he wants to open up a weird exotic beverage factory. Now, I'm not really sure what type of beverages this exotic factory is going to produce, but I'm pretty sure because he's a pretty smart guy, he'll figure it out. But either way, you know, coming into the studio, he will always have a random bottle of exotic beverages. Thing number two is he's a smoker. You guys already know that, but I thought, you know, I gotta give him some credit because he at least has a strong willpower because as much as I condemn smoking and attack him for smoking every chance I get, he manages to still be a smoker. Now, I'm a pretty persuasive guy, but I've still not been able to persuade him to stop smoking, which means that I guess I'm not that persuasive. Or maybe he's just really determined to continue burning his lungs out. Either way, he's a smoker. Thing number three, He's sort of a weird foodie. Like, he's not one of those foodies that goes to, like, the food festival things, but he's also, like, every now and then, he'll have, like, well, yeah, you know, he, he, he really has this weird obsession. I think it comes from his family. Like, they have this, these, this weird obsession. Like, they're these weird, they're foodies. And, hey, it's, you know, it's a good thing. I mean, I'm not a foodie. I like to cook, but he's a foodie. Um, and I think you should know that. Thing number four. He likes cats, which is very weird because I really don't have very many cat lover friends. I think cat lovers are sort of weird and awkward. And if you're a cat lover, no offense to you. But I just find cats, I think cats are very nosy. But he loves cats, and he has two cats, if you didn't know this, Zar and Larry. Larry is the cool cat. Zar is the wild cat. But I think Zar is calming down these days. Number four. I said we're at number five. He's pretty organized. He is a pretty organized guy because I'm just a bumbling mess, but he keeps the show organized. He makes sure you get the YouTube videos each and every day. So he's an organized guy. Thing number six, he keeps the Fowler show going. Yes, indeed, America is true beyond the fact that he answers my 3 a.m. phone calls and I have these random ass aha moments. He actually keeps the Fowler show going each and every day, not only for the YouTube channel, but for our, our listening audience, make sure every syndicate gets a show on time. And to that, you know, the show would be nothing without him, right? Thing number seven, or I think we're thinking of eight. He has a horrible memory, which creates trouble from time to time. Because I re like I have actually pretty good memory, but in our random conversations, I don't remember everything I said or everything that we need to do, and neither does he. So I think that's also, I think it's almost like a help to the show because in all the random things that I think we need to do, we actually never end up getting done because we shouldn't have done them in the first place because he doesn't remember to do them anyway, or I don't remember to do them because he doesn't remind me to do them. So whatever. Thing number eight. Um, he deals with my crazy ass, which, shit, I mean, come on, America, it's a hard job. Dealing with me is just hard. So, he gets a lot of credit for that. Thing number nine, he's actually really committed in all seriousness. This show would be nothing without him, and he is really committed to what we do at The Fowler Show, which is to inform, to empower, and to help you get your voice back. And more so than that, I think he has a very, very huge commitment to our audience and to all of you out there in Fowler Nation. Um, I almost think that he is the, like, he's the coach. He's like the, you know, the Phil Jackson of Fowler Nation. Um, and for that, we're grateful. And number 10, and the most important thing, beyond the fact that he's a really good guy and whatever, but this show would be nothing without him. We've been through a lot of hills, mole hills, and hills, potholes, landmines. But the reason why this still show is still going is because of his sheer dedication to making sure that you guys at home get this show and the sheer dedication to what we stand for at the Fowler Show. Wow. Wow.